So this is kind of like similar to last game. These supports just very, very strong right from the very beginning. They just need one level at best. And I wouldn't even be surprised if they just Ten hit all three lanes remaining. simultaneously. Like, you kill one lane, clarity up, TP to another lane, Ten and just keep going. Because that's kind of like how they, how they seem to, like, uh, play. Especially with this kind of... Uh... Ooh. Now we get ourselves a Rubik taken for SFT. Um, anything that really sticks out to you as a, a reason for taking this hero? Is it to counter out, like... There's not really great spells to steal, right? Oh, uh, not no. I think I think uh, a lot of Bane spells are actually very good to steal because there's no cast animation. So let's say you steal Nightmare, for example, you, you pretty much instantly sleep someone defensively or offensively. Then you can always easily steal Fiend's Grip. You have to channel right. that, <clears throat> and it just gives them more ways to actually break the Fiend's Grip. If Night Stalker not exactly the most reliable. To be to be fair, neither is Rubik, but having more options definitely help you out. Yeah. Canceling that. Well, Team Secret getting down to the wire here with their fourth pick. They are going to be taking a Pugna. So keeping up the theme of last game, trying to end this game early. Man, there are a lot of green heroes in this. Holy Toledo. Three three green versus three green so far. <laughs> Yeah. So this is just straight up push from Team Secret, right? Like, end the game quickly. They want to get out and have themselves an early dinner or something. Get to bed early. Um, I don't think it's going to be, like, that early. I think there's other heroes that you can pick as supports if you wanted to actually end it super early. Because Bane and Earth Spirit don't exactly offer you too much when you're trying to siege. Pugna right now is pretty much the only one who does that. Well, Enchantress also, right? Uh, Enchantress, sort of. I, I, I wouldn't rely too much on her, on her ability to age with Ten only creeps. Remaining. I think like after, you know, you take away the tier one and couple, couple Five tier twos, her, uh, her pushing potential is kind of, kind of falls off. Mostly comes from the okay. pugna afterwards. The Venom Master by then, you know, has level seven, and then you have enough wards that the Radiant your creeps don't exactly do too much. Oh lordy. Well, that's the uh, that's the other pushing hero then. <laughs> yeah, this one, this one definitely will push towers fairly quickly. I was thinking like maybe they would go for something like a mid one Dragon Knight, and then they have Ace mm. play Safe Lane Pugna, but yeah, Terra Blade uh, also able to do the job, but scales a little better than a DK does uh, down the line, just more damage output. So how this works. Yeah, there's that too. Um, it's probably going to be a safe lane Necro. That's what I have to do. I think you want to pair up the Venomancer against the Pugna. I mean, the thing is, Team Secret can also mix it up very easily if they wanted to. If they wanted to safe lane an Enchantress and aggro tri lane with Earth Spirit Bane and Terra Blade, that's probably an option as well. So look at uh, the SFT side, their supports seem kind of weak. The Night Stalker and a Rubik don't really offer you too much compared to the Earth. Especially, I think at level 1 it's not that bad, but once level 2 actually occurs, then it's a lot better for Team Secret. Okay. You may now select your heroes. Uh, he'll... They'll definitely be relying on him to make movements, but I think uh, Rubik will also play a, a big part in this. I think the Night Stalker definitely has to work with the Rubik. Otherwise, just looking at the lane setups, I don't think one support alone is going to be enough. And it's really, it's really hard to say whether or not you know, a lot of these heroes will work out. Because using last game as a comparison is a little unfair. I think having the Broodmother in the mid lane just made 
all, all a lot of their game plan just go out the window. You had the aggro tri lane against the Doom in the jungle, and then you had a brood against an invoker. And then you had the enchanters versus Envenomancer. Like no matter how you look at it, that was just a complete lane out draft at least. Yeah. <clears throat> No, it was a serious problem, and and I think that that's the thing I was talking about. Where like they didn't get to play their game. I, I think that that game wasn't an indication of how uh, different the skill level is between these two teams. I think that Team Seeker probably has the high skill level, um, but it's still it's not like as big of a, a a gap as we saw in that last game. That last game was definitely something else. <laughs> yeah. They're just gonna have to move past it. Just. Talk it off as a outdraft, you know. Think too much about it. Yep. Poker's gonna start with Klaus once again. Yep. I'm starting to think that uh, maybe all he does is play Klaus Wex. Yeah. Do you think that Klaus Wex is still pretty viable? Like we saw Dendi do it the other day in that Navi game, and it looked really, really good. Um, yeah, definitely. You think it's still pretty good? Yeah, especially in a game like this. Um, once again, it's just another way to deal with the the bane from getting off his ability. Heroes like Terra Blade and Earth Spirit, actually, even even actually the entire lineup will suffer greatly from getting hit by EMP. None of them actually build into great great amounts of mana. They're gonna have to have a lot of a lot of uh, arcane boots on their side to sustain mana if they do have to deal with a lot of EMP. So we got to talk about this for a second. It's mid one playing Terra Blade mid, and it's going to be a Fata Pugna in the off lane tri lane, and they're playing Ace on the Enchantress. I so, do have a quick emergency to deal with. So uh oh! I, I need to be right back for like thirty seconds. All right, go for it. Do your thing, man. I'll be able to watch this stuff as they come in, puppy. Getting a couple hits off. That's a lot of damage from that first Nether Blast. And, well, he's able to pick up a rune as well. So Secret get themselves three runes. And now Yapsor able to find that stun. Rolling forward. Found himself Illidan. First blood drawn by Fatas. They're going to keep on battling <laughs> underneath the creep wave. You know, i got to say for myself at least, this feels like it's it, not necessarily like a sign of disrespect necessarily, but confidence for sure. Uh, Puppy just walks through the tower, apparently. Um, but they should be able to get out of there perfectly fine. And Steven, if you end up getting back, just feel free to start talking at any point. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm back already. All right, just good. have to open the door really quickly. No problem. Um, so, yeah, they get first blood, and mid one is standing on Thompson's Hill, and he's at half HP. But he does have Quas, so he's got some regen going for him. As Roland down bottom, finding themselves Illidan, seeing if they can get that kill. The Void is going to slow him down, so they won't be able to chase that Necro too much further. And once again, this is aggro trialing with Pugna. They're, they lane the Enchantress against the, the Venomancer once again, especially since they know just how bad that matchup is. So I'm going to consider that a lane that's won, and mid one just seems to be dominating the mid lane as well, considering it has that much more uh, damage than the Quas Invoker. Yeah. Yeah, he's sitting on a measly 53 versus the 60 of mid one. Does need to be a little bit careful since Metamorphosis is down, but we'll uh, we'll watch how that lane unfolds itself as over here to the side, Puppy is getting body blocked. They do have a good amount of lockdown for him as he's going to head over Baiting. into the trees, trying to bait them into something. Is SDSD going to get ran at? And well, they're sort of posturing for positioning to see who can get into Bange for the bounty rune and... Secret win that battle. This really hurts for SFT though, because both of their supports basically getting harassed out of lane. Illidan is going to be by himself momentarily, so what have, we here? have to keep an eye out for these supports who come back. Yeah. And Nikwa went to the jungle, got himself level three by virtue of those camps, and can head back there and pick up the rune again in a little bit if he wants, but can just spam out the lane. So it's going a little bit better for Nikwa this time. Um, maybe he learned something from that last game about how to play that lane better, but 14 CS, some of those being jungle creeps, not the worst in the world. I think most of it is jungle, actually. I think uh, this matchup is a little better for the Venomancer from the uh, Radiant side, because you're just right. right next to the two camps. As well as the bounty route, so not it's as like, long as a trip. Compared to the Illidan might go down. 
They do have another Nether Blast here, which they're going to throw out in just a second. They don't decide to do it. Roll. Uh, yep, so a little bit off the mark. Missing that one. Does have the damage and is quite going to get there. Illidan's going to fall. Oh, Fata picking hurts. it up. That was a mango use, too. Yeah. So if you count that in, that's another 100 gold. <laughs> All right, double salve, and they're back up to full with just a, a great start already in this bottom lane. But it's not as bad as it was last time. Um, you look at the CS across the board, and they've they've made adjustments that they need to. The other lanes aren't actually just losing to the point where they have to go straight into the jungle. Topson last game just actually wasn't able to do anything. Ace was level six, and he was jungling four. Yeah. Well, three and a half minutes in, 0-2, oh and, and it is just going to be a constant spam out of these tornadoes against mid one. He does have a salve, but waiting on using that, turning to kind of fight. Has he gotten a little bit too far forward? There's a cold snap. Well, mid one, not going to end up going down there, it looks like. They do have another tornado in 15, but by that time, mid one will be full life again and ready to go in. Reflection slowing down Thompson a bit. Can't actually that. Metamorphosis used again. Is he gonna get him here? Oh, I was really close. Probably two more hits and it would have been a kill. So mid one. Again. Absor giving a punch in the back. They do have a roll though. STST is in a little bit of trouble here. Uh, we'll be able to fly away. It's nighttime. He's actually quite fast oh, and. I think he. Yeah, they can't I think they it. expected him to fly to the left side, so they just gave up, but <laughs> they didn't realize he actually never made it across. Yeah. Force the TP away. Puppy does have pretty decent vision right here. They see that Thompson is in the area, and with the rotation over from Yapsor, they might be looking to put the hurt to him. Yes, he, though. Thompson sees out. them both. He sees uh, the Earth Spirit, yeah. So... Night Stalker keeping his Invoker safe. And the game is looking a hell of a lot better for SFT. This is much more what I think everybody was expecting. That uh, an evenly matched game with Secret maybe slightly ahead, uh, but not by much. Yeah, you can see Nikwa this time. He realizes just how bad the matchup is. Actually spends most of his time in the jungle. He's doing a good job of just making sure both of these camps are cleared every minute. And then he heads back to lane for just a little bit. Oh. And the Absor maybe getting a little bit too big for his britches. They're chasing. It's nighttime, and he is going to end up dying. Ultimate. We'll play he there. More, though. Chasing puppy right now. Yes, he stick charges and a nightmare. They might be able to go for a deny here, or he can just walk away if Brain Sap is back up in time. I don't that think they can like go for this. He has seven wand charges. There's no way they go for this. Ace, in the meantime, was able to kill off Nikwa in the top lane. Just a little bit of outplay going on. All right. Illidan. Pops the Ghost Shroud and turns around, and now they have the Shrine to work with. Okay, so six minutes in. There's been kills on both sides this time, and people getting decent CS. How do you see the next few minutes unfolding now? Uh, is this just because it's that four-minute mark and Night Soccer is capable of doing things? I, I think that definitely helps them a lot right now. Uh, but once it hits daytime again, I think that's pretty much when Secret are probably going to make the move to Pressure towers, mid one, dealing a bit of damage to the mid tower. Uh, 500, 500 points of damage. Oh, Another lane though. here. Yeah, they're going oh, yeah. on to him, and right click will be there to kill, almost kill him off. 4 HP actually. He's going to live there. Yeah, Absor, still getting ran at. He doesn't have a roll for three more seconds. Can he get out of there? Hunter in the night. The damage. Do they have any? He doesn't have enough void. Not enough mana, but still finds that right click kill. and. Now a Nightmare, looks like Necro will also be able to live. So again, Night Stalker making the moves for SFT in these early goings. Very nicely done by uh, SFT to kind of pull this lane back. I think uh, at this point, Spirit are losing this off lane now. Top tower is under attack. Managed to catch up, we'll take uh, Fata in terms of... No. Be a shrine from both the supports. Right. Maybe time to move again. And Thompson also, he's been able to push mid one out of lane at least for a little while. So the Invoker getting his stuff done as well. 
Level 8 already, and looks like he's going to be going in for that urn build, which is another moment where you can get a lot done with that. Cold snap and ghost walking around, finding kills. Bottom lane, Pugna. Going to get found out there. He is in trouble and going to be brought down. Fought to killed off. This lane is just becoming a serious hazard for Secret. Yeah, I think at this point, you want to start considering moving the entire tri-lane elsewhere. Maybe group up with the Enchantress. Enchantress is very tanky, has the Hood of Defiance as well as Fate. And then you just push down this uh, top tower, maybe. Although it is a little difficult. Qua is here to spam it out with the... Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Four points in those wards as well. Just gone for whatever he can to slow down the pressure that they know is going to be coming from Secret. Is this a type of game where... As it goes later and later, secrets start running into issues of scaling, or do you think that their lineup is going to be good no matter what? Um, I, I think I think it's a pretty pretty even draft. On okay, I think that uh, both sides will always be able to, assuming they have equivalent farm. I, I think both sides should be able to win a team fight. It's just a matter of team fights better, obviously. Yeah. And we do see a lane switch up now. Um, it's going to be the Necro and the Veno heading top to start to pressure that tower in. Well, bottom lane, they're going to have to give up their own tower. So I like this decision. You know, the Night Stalker, he can't really do as much during the daytime. They know that they're going to be able to, they're going to end up losing their bottom tower. So push for the top. The scary thing for Secret right now is that since the tri lane didn't really work out at all, I mean, it worked out a little bit and then they kind of fell apart. Uh, down the line, but Puppy is only level 2. He's about to yeah. hit level 3, but he's very, very low level. Yapsor, given the mid lane, trying to catch up now, almost 5. Ports, not doing very well. Uh, that kind of like slows down their progress. For sure. Oh, and Yapsor now in Yapsor. some trouble. If he ends up going down there, that would have been quite bad. Giving over any earn charges to Invoker at this point is scary too, because he can kill a lot of people with that. If he had earned right there, he would have killed the uh, Earth. Yeah. Have anything on him? Well, Ace and Yapsor, maybe going to make that move towards mid. Or possibly just head back over and pick up some bounty runes, etc. Is Ace just going to run at him? Okay. I mean, if so, you look at Ace, how do you even. How do you. You can't really kill Ace. Yeah. This is another one of those you need the, your five-man gank for it to work out. A plus six all stats in as well and everything else that goes along with it. He takes over this catapult now. And they're going to be able to do a lot of damage to this tower with double catapult and pugna. But the big movement's coming down right now from SFT. Do secret spot this. They do see Illidan right now. So he wraps around. The Rubik is in the area as well. But... Starting to deal a bit of damage. They also are bringing in Yapsor. He got level 6 with the Tome as well as that experience mid. Can I don't know fight? if this is the best chase by SFT. They have to be careful here. Yeah, careful. There's the damage oh. being dealt right there. He decides to silence the Enchantress. Doesn't want to get hit with that impetus. And Fata now low on mana. This but is a lot of is, space. There's no combo now, so... Seeker so not going to be as scared. Yeah. Go Shroud to back it up. But look at how much damage that tower took. It's pretty insane. Qua is actually having a decent game this time around. <clears throat> I think he learned, definitely learned his lesson from last game. Just don't try to fight the Enchantress in, in, in lane. Yeah. Go jungle. Get your farm up. So, 11 minutes in. He's got the Midas. He's got the Arcane Boots. He's doing a very good job in keeping up his farm this time around. Uh, now Illidan may be in some trouble there. Do they have a way to break this? Trying to kill him, not going to happen though. And now nighttime yet again. STST going to live through those three impetus shots. Well, Invoker is going to move down. Check for the rune. Sees that it's not there. Now going to run into Bane. This could be bad. Nightmare? Nope. Okay. EMP Tornado. He doesn't have the combo anymore. Puppy taking some damage. Going to end up going down. Can Yapsor find him? Looks like the answer is no. Almost getting that courier too. He's trying to find the courier right now. Oh. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. Mid lane, one mask of madness. Pick up the Rubik kill. Oh. 
Not gonna find the He does have earn charges now, though. Yep. Two of them, in fact, can get on top of them with the cold snap there. They turn now onto the Pugna. Silence comes out, though, from Yapsor. Does end up losing Fata. So again, SFT finding the initiation. They've been able to run into Ace now. Can they kill him off as well? Looks like with the tornado, nice tornado connects onto Yapsor as well. And Nikwa going to drop the ulti as well. Ace still living through all of that. He just has so much freaking magic resistance with that cloak as well as the natural heal that's coming through. And... He's so tanky, look at him. He is just not up. dying. Yeah. That was, he tanked a full ultimate and a Reaper Scythe. Granted, that didn't do that much because of the heal and the hood, but S is hard to kill off that Enchantress. Yeah, Ace is pretty much unkillable. He has his drums now as well. He's going to be moving very quickly. Puppy? Uh, he sleeps himself. Now takes the tornado, jump oh, in, big magnetize combo. onto four. Can he get a second round of it going? He ends up dropping it again, only reapplies onto two, and might be able to get another three reapplication here. onto three again. So eight so far, as Illidan also going to get ran down. Do they have another reflection here? They can use it in just a second if they want, but decide to back out as Fata takes down Thompson. Yeah, unfortunately for a mid one, didn't have the vision, missed his reflex, but it's going to be a mid... Free mid tower now. Radiance middle tower has fallen. Okay. Well, 14 minutes. It's still a slight lead for secret, though. SFT is making inroads onto that. The game is pretty even right now. You have to remember, secret did take that bottom tier two as well, so their lead basically coming off of a tower only. Yeah. Um. As far as where the net worth is situated, can see that... Oh, no. Invoker's probably just going to pick off Puppy here. I don't think that they can stop. Uh, nobody can get here quickly enough. Maybe getting a little bit greedy with his farming. He did manage to get a little... Oh. He got the Nightmare off? He got the Nightmare off because I think Popson didn't have the cooldown ready. Oh, he still catches them with the... All oh, right. And they're going to catch well, him anyways. Yeah. So, a nice kill there. Um, thought the Puppy might have been able to get out. And Fata now... Just going to retreat as well. But yeah, I think you accept that kill on your Bane. He got level 6 pushing out the lane like that. Probably going to be looking to make moves. 6 on the Bane. You want to get a grip, get a kill. Hopefully turn that into a objective. Find Peksu. Looking to be a very dead Rubik, perhaps? Doesn't have the slow for another 3 seconds, though. But I think... Uh oh, the rest of the team is here though. This is a bait. Oh, can they get it? Mid one walking forward. They get the silence right at the start. Cold snap there as well. Nowhere to go. Mid one going down. And maybe so too will be Ace. They have another void in one second. There yeah, it is when they come he's back down. There's, he's not done. <laughs> he's going to pop the hood. Yep, so they get a big old ulti off as well, but there's the Fiend's Grip. They take down yet another, and now starting to fall is going to be Puppy, but there's a ton of damage being dealt out. Uh, Earth Spirit, unfortunately, he already ends up going down, and now Fata trying to turn this, see if he can take down the Volker. The sticks are going to keep him alive, as Ace still stay alive as well. You mentioned he's not going down. He's still 17 wand charges. Yeah. Nikwa, maybe not fully understanding the depth of his despair, as it's going to end up being Ace. Maybe falling here as well. They kill off the Pugna. He's going to end up dying. They chase for more. Ace has taken a lot of freaking damage here. Oh, they're getting, they might get him this time for real. Oh, oh, the block! Nice the block off. on the ward. It's not going to happen, though. He's still living. I think. Yeah, he's, he has a heal. He's got he a heal a now. Heal. Wow. It's nice and all that your Enchantress survived, but the rest of the team went down, so definitely a big win for SFT right there. For sure. Yeah, there was, what, how much is this? 7,000 and a bit damage dealt? Um, I don't even know if they have that much HP between all of their heroes, but uh, yeah, it's 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 a one story is the gold, but the other story is that this experience is going to start to spike up as they keep on winning these fights. But Team Secret now going to try and go for a sneaky Roche play with the DD on mid one, and this could be the thing that starts to turn the game into their favor. I mean, the game is still pretty even. They just have to be careful with how they take these engagements. Mid one can't be caught out like that pretty much most of their damage they yeah 
terms of right click at least. Look at look at how much damage he does with that double damage. It's actually insane how much damage he does. Metamorphosis and double damage. Yeah, that's crazy. Radiance and I think this is one of those heroes that we're going to see become even like slight, uh, maybe more buffed than other heroes with the changes of the 40 minute runes times two because you got a better chance of getting double damages and late game with Terror Blade, that's just, it's really hard to deal with. Something interesting about mid one's build though, he's going to be going for Sanjin Yasha first. I think somewhere down the line he'll probably disassemble it. Because I think Manta Style is going to be very important in this game. The silence to get rid of from the Night Stalker as well as potentially Orchid from uh, from Invoker. But if you get silenced by the Night Stalker, that alone should be up the Manta Style unless you're going to go for a BKB immediately. It looks like Topson is actually going to be switching back into more of the... Uh... I think that they pinged out that Invoker was by him. It looked like it was for a second. I don't know. Um, but I think that this is going to be one of those games where he's trying to transition a little bit, it seems like. Uh, does have that Hand of Midas done and now building towards the Aghanims after the drums. Um, do you think that's the right decision? Yeah, I think this is fine. He, a lot of the team's uh, AoE as well as control, so... Oh, mid lane. Find Fata. Uh, good decrep right there. Keeping their buddy alive, but Fata is not going to be able to live through all of that and... Well, mid you one shows up. All right, big jump in there. And, oh, the tornado interruption though. Nikwa is going to end up dying. But that also meant that they didn't get the ulti off onto them from that one. So that's cool. Oh, they guessed wrong. Mid one now in a little bit of trouble. Deafening blast as well. It's a long duration disarm. With all those points up in Quasen. Well, now also going to be able to try and bring down Illini. He's got a ton of heals that's coming in, but will eventually fall. So final tally ends up being two for three. With Team Secret coming out on the top. And Team Secret still have an Aegis to play around. Probably going to go Shrine up right now. Maybe push on, push in the top tier one. It's like at 120 life. I mean, they don't even have to push it back door this time. Yeah. That's true. And maybe even this creep wave that's coming in might be enough to push it over the edge. Although Night Soccer is coming up to stop that from happening. As far as SFT is concerned, uh, we've talked a lot about what secrets sort of need to do to come out on top. Where do you feel like their their next few minutes of game is going to lie? Like, what what are they trying to accomplish over the next few minutes here? Just keep farming, or it really feels like the way they're playing is kind of like well, well, they're kind of playing reactionary, Radiance top making the move. Being denied. Yeah, I think like. The first step is they probably don't want to re-engage Secret, especially since Bid One still has it. They just probably just be a little patient, wait, tight on anything. After yeah. that, then you can start making plays, perhaps, where it's nighttime and, and try to take a team that instead. It looks like they're going for Mass Midas as well as we see a pickoff there. Yapsor just gonna take off the Rubik. Rubik in the river. Trying to invade. That, that was their smoke. Well, so. Rubik killed. for smoke, not that bad. Oh, wait. Opsin, he finds a courier kill. Okay. Oh, they found a nice doctor, though. Nikwa goes in. Oh my god. You're not even going to kill off Fata. He's going to live, and then all the turnaround. Excuse me, he does end up going down, but, well, tornado EMP combo. This might be enough if Ace can do enough damage. It's looking like everybody is dying from SFT. I thought there was a chance, but. It was never going to be enough. It's just, it's so risky. Especially since the Rubik ended up going down, so they're basically fighting that 4v5. And I'm sure they realize that Terrorblade still has the Aegis, so... Top tower regardless of how well they initiate, it's still going to be a difficult fight. Look at Puppy. He's not caring about anything. They don't have Fiend Script right now, though, so he might be fighting enough more than he can chew. We'll See him just die? That was a little bit odd, but it ends up being worth it since they take down the Rubik. I, I, mean, I don't think he was expecting that much damage. He's definitely just trying to bait. And, yeah. Well, so it sort of works, I guess. I mean, him dying, not great, but killed the Rubik off. Yeah. Whoops, comes out. Imagine if we had a <laughs> uh, chat, chat wheel set. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> well, I guess you can, you can do your best to uh, replace it. Not oh, that we no. Not have it anymore. 
I'm pretty sure we've seen that before. The so how so? That's the great <laughs> pronunciation, right? Uh, okay, yeah, let's not do that. Then. That's good. Good call. Well, 3,000 net worth lead and starting to trend down into the favor of Team Secret. 6,000 experience as well, but like I said before, they've got three Midas's working. Maybe in a little while, these things can start paying for themselves and building into those bigger items. If they can just hold the push that we know is going to be coming from Team Secret. Two minutes away before Roshan is even capable of respawning and Peksu going to be ran into. The Absor throws out one stun. It connects now onto the Rubik. STST does have vision, but there's the Fiend's grip. They dodge away, and he's actually not going to live. He is going to live. Very nicely done. Puppy kind of had to let him go. They saw the tornado coming in, so he's going to go dodge that instead of continuing the grip. So now Fiend's grip is down. We'll, we'll have to see how much that impacts the uh, next engagement if they decide to. Mid one is actually not there to, as well, so... I'm sure they realize this as well. Mm -hmm. Trying the best to catch someone. He's four staffs, it's catapult. <laughs> that thing is a valid it. profession. It would be cool if they had the invoker with the enchantress. That's the strat I want to see. Alacrity catapult. Alacrity catapult. That's the dream. I mean, that'd be pretty sounds good. Really, sounds really awful. To be what are you talking about? Why don't you just get a helm of the dominator so you could do it with anyone? That's fair enough. I still think Alacrity Catapult's the way of the future. I mean, if you want to, if you want to go that far, like, what about a lineup that has uh, a bunch of attack speed auras and whatnot, and just have everyone buy Helm of the Dominator Catapult? I have actually. We did that before one time. It was pretty great, uh, like and we won. Master, for example. Yeah. And Chen, all those heroes. It's, it's a great time. Should try it out sometime. <laughs> <laughs> well, with a little bit of a lull in our game right now. It is going to be daytime now. Still three minutes until night. If Night Sucker wants to, they could go out and get a little bit fresh with each other. He does have darkness available. Meanwhile, it's also going to be that Invoker Ag's done as well as the Venomancer. So he's got the jump in and give your life away for a big ultimate, a build going with the Blink Ag's. That's something we see a ton nowadays with Venom. Gonna be a ton of damage. The manages to get it off. Secret. Our smoked puppy is smoked. Well, it's Yap Sword. Trying to find something. Gonna have his smoke broken. Everything now. Oh, the decrep on the siege creeps. That way Enchantress can come and take it. And now the siege with the Aether Lens begins. There is also... Look at, look at how many catapults he has. The ward down. That is a lot of freaking catapults. All right. Brain sap there as well. Send them up high ground. They don't want to give these away. They're valuable resources, but they are starting to take a bit of damage. Dillon's <laughs> going to be run back. Oh, mid one goes in. BKB pop. Just going to destroy that Rubik. Gone in an instant. And also turning his attention now off to the side. Mid one does still have Sunder. Turns oh, nice it around thunder. onto Nikwa. He's going to end up falling as well. They're all taking a ton of damage, but they do manage to actually get that Shrine off. So they're going to live for the moment. Still a lot of damage there. Sunstrike off the mark. They do still kill off Fata. Nico with a double so far. Can they roll away from here and stay alive? No pipe as of yet. Mid one not wanting to die here. They do have a TP boots. Thompson manning up against mid one. Is he going to die? They do find that kill. But so too will die the invoker. Ace trying to get himself more. out of there. He has stick charges still. Nico has the blink. Oh. oh, he cancels the regen as well. Is he going to catch him? He does have a roll away up to the high ground. There's the shrine. Might need to pop it there to help out his team. And Ace walks inside the Roche pit to see his quarry has ran away. And they won't be able to catch and kill. That was a great trade from SFT, though. I think if you can kill off the Terra Blade at every engagement, it's definitely worth it for you. As long as you're not trading 4 for 1, 5 for 1 type. Yeah, and that was only about half damage done to both towers, so... Not significant structural damage either. SFT, they're putting on a significantly better showing than last game. Uh, very clear that that one was just a draft win. And at least for now, I wouldn't say it's Secret are struggling to close them out, but uh, it's not easy at the very least. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially with uh, how high level this Venomancer is. High ground is definitely not an easy Yeah. We, uh, four and a half levels away from 25. 
having to deal with those wards not going to be easy. And I mean, I can't wait to see how much damage Nico has done in, in the game. I'm pretty sure he's going to be at least double the next person. Yeah. And with that Midas going next for the Octarine, it's going to give him even more sustain in these team fights. Allow him to maybe get off a couple rounds of Gale. Is... Well, mid one, and Yaps are moving mid. They have a pipe between them now. As well as they, a they definitely bottom. need this pipe. Gotcha. They need pipe. Potentially, they need Glimmer as well. So as much magic resistance as possible, because that's pretty much all that's coming out of. Uh, yeah. Smoke up. Was not scouted. That is a five-man smoke, but Secret look like they have an inkling that something could be going on. Bane heading east. Stopping for the moment. Does still have a Force Staff, and they are going to find him. Force Staff to the high ground. Pops the Shrine. Rest yeah, of his teammates showing up. That is going to be the jump forward. They find the kill, but simultaneously it's a Magnetize. On to two. Silence on to three. Can they kill him off? Reapplication of Magnetize. This time connects on to three of them. Sunstrike's going to be there, but a little bit off the mark. Nikwa dropping as well. They found themselves the Rubik. He has nowhere left to go. The smoke does not end the way that they hoped it would. Three are dead. And sadly, no yeah. chat wheel was heard that day. Oh, mid one immediately TP's in the mid lane, tries to get in a ton of damage. With that double damage, he is monster with this. 530 damage. Yeah, he's waiting for that Mask of Madness to wear off, it looks like. He could walk back in now, does have that BKB, but would have maybe been a death sentence to go in there after that. Oh, maybe, oh, maybe not, though. Dodge. They've been able to catch him. Definitely blast, pretty decent. And Pugna also draining life away. He's holding on to that BKB, though. There's the cold snap as well. Diffusal blade taken out of his backpack as well. So they can turn, but with no meta, they probably decide to back off there and suffice to take down the shrines. Still a very big victory there, winning the team fight and then still managing to take a tier three tower. Gives them a little more options uh, the next time they potentially win a team fight. Mm-hmm. Not to mention just sending illusions over here at these shrines when mid one doesn't want to use them to push her farm. I have a feeling this next engagement most likely will be at Roshan. I think SFT don't want to give it away. No. Oh. Other big things that are coming up. It's a Enchantress almost done with her Aghanim Scepter and also has the 60 untouchable slow. Um, any other big items or levels that you've seen coming out that you think are going to be pretty impactful? around mid one did finish his diffusal blade also holding on to 2600 gold already he's already a monster i don't think there's anything really to anticipate from him pugna finishes his scepter at least so that's kind of cool yeah long range with that atas look at that thing that's gonna be hard to contend with i think but... we were watching that one game where g played pugna and couldn't actually kill him because he kept <laughs> life trading yeah Probably a little bit harder this game since you've got Void, Crippling Fear, Cold Snap Tornado, you know, uh, I, I think it's still actually okay, this game. Yeah. Simply because their big, or SFT's biggest issue is this Terrorblade. They have to address the Terrorblade before anything else in my... Pugna gonna get a decent amount of time to just spam everything consistently. Maybe even yep. see some clutch uh, life drain saves. Oh, Necro. He's oh, no. Yeah, that ward. They must have spotted him out or just thought that, yeah, it's easy peasy pickings. And now They're Seeker, gonna go they got a mid. Do they have TPs? TP in the backpack of Night Stalker, and Rubik uh -oh. does have one. Invoker is going to get caught here. Oh, this the kickback really that caught him. This is really, really bad. They're just going to connect, and, well, he's going to end up dying. So no Invoker, no Necro. They do a buyback on Invoker. And they're going to be forced to use it now. All right, mid one. Mask of Madness pop turning his sights now onto these barracks. And Rubik ends up stealing Metamorphosis. The jump forward BKB pop turn. A fight just going to completely destroy Pexu. He actually doesn't end up dying. They decide they want to take down this Venomancer instead. He'd already used his ultimate mid one. Let's start to be taking that DOT after taking down the melee barracks. Yeah, I think they're okay with that. They don't lose anything. Their Metamorphosis is down. And... 
still managed to take the melee racks. This is time to go back to Roshan. Oh. There's a DD down bottom, which isn't going to be scouted out as of yet. But it's, like you said, Rosh time, and... Well, we're going to have to see what SFT's answer is to this. They actually want to go and contest right now. Can they get here? It's not the fastest in the world. They have these illusions that are moving up this way. Thompson. He's got EMP and Tornado together to throw it on out. Connects now onto one, but there's going to be the catch. The roll through with the boulder. Can they get him? They have Magnetize as well. Oh, there's a big old Magnetize. And the damage coming as well from Fata. He's out of mana right now, so no more life drains, actually. That EMP Tornado was pretty good, but uh, they I just have too much too net late. worth. Yeah. They even bought back on, on the Venomancer, but he wasn't even able to get there in time. Um, back into the Roche Pit. Three end up going down. Invoker doesn't have the buyback either. And this could be the beginning of the ruination. Team Secret looking quite in control of this game. Cheese on the ground. Mid one has his Lincoln Sphere as well. Giving him that extra layer of protection against Necromance or ne Necrophos. Now you've been playing too much PoE. Is that a PoE class? It is. No. That was just a really? guess, though. So. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Reflection out. Mid one BKB pop. Still there with the Aegis. They are going to not oh. get him. All right. That's a nightmare. <laughs> oh, then here comes the life drain. Oh, no. And then the turnaround again with the Sunder. He has so many lives. Mid one. Hey, this, this doesn't even really matter. He, he, just, he really doesn't care at this point. He still has Lincolns as well as Aegis. He just wants to throw away oh. his life at this point. Yeah, and he might end up doing it, but... I mean, for what? It doesn't even really matter. Nice little wraparound there, dodge from Peksu, but now that Infusal Blade is there as well, they're going to take him down. They are diving base. Don't even care about the Tier 3 tower, which hasn't been taken yet. Uh, SDX actually has taken down Yapsor as mid one turns the sights to the bottom racks, but this is looking like, again, a secret victory, unless something really magical happens here from SFT. I don't think we'll be seeing that. There's no buybacks on anyone, and... Mid one is still in the base, just hammering your towers, your racks. Yeah. Still has BKB as well, so there's really no way you're gonna kill him. Yeah. Four staff from his allies helping him out a little bit there. They catch out Illidan, Diffusal Blade, just inside Catches range, up. and finally the BKB. They turn now as well on Thompson or the Night Stalker, whoever he wants to. Somebody is dying, that is for damn sure. They have Sunder again. 25 oh, talent, it's going to be back up. Maybe. Nice four staffs. Yep, and he's got Sunder again in three seconds, so it kind of doesn't even end up mattering. Waiting to get it set oh. up. Now the Necro <laughs> going to be in trouble. Forced back. Sunstrike connects onto Ace to no avail. This is going to be Megas if they want it, but it looks like They're Secret just going to back out. That's a pretty big gold swing. 25,000 net worth lead for Team Secret and around 20,000 experience. Going to do my moon shard. <laughs> oh, mid one, then, you know, casual 27,000 net worth. Pretty much double the, uh, his opponent's top net worth. Yeah. Has the diff blade level two coming out as well. He used all the charges in that last fight. It's okay though. He's got he refreshed it. He's got a diffusal level two now. So yep, we have eight more. This is feeling like quite the hard one to come back from at this point. Team Secret just knew what they need to do. What else can we really say about SFT here? Uh, I mean, Heaven's Halberd could make a pretty big difference. Um, if there's one thing that's true about this mid one build it's mainly built around his like main hero his illusions do a lot but he doesn't have like the manta style or what have you to propagate them more quickly i'm i'm i think this is like one of those situations where even if you manage to hit a five man everything i, I think you still lose game <laughs> yeah that's just kind of how far ahead secret are they have all the items to turn things around as well look at look at ac he's got a casual Moon shard in his inventory as well. That thick attack speed. Let's see how fast he goes with this one. Oh, lots of damage being dealt. The fiend script on Voker, and he is going to die. Just 
Oh, maybe not. They're getting a little bit greedy there. I don't think those were impetus shots coming out from Ace during that. So, well, Sunder stolen to heal back up the Invoker. Okay, cute. But now mid one's shown up. He's got BKB still, so he doesn't care. Oh, God, the reflection comes through. There's the turnaround. They're going to be able to kill them all off. Nikwa's going to end up falling. He pops the ultimate. It is not going to really matter, though. They turn onto the buildings, and with Mega Creeps, with a 30,000 gold lead, good game is going to be called. And Secret, going to finish this one off 2 0. It was a much better attempt this time. The early game actually wasn't that bad for uh, SFT, but a couple of misplays here and there, I think, uh, overall. Secret just coming out ahead. Probably just more experience when 